Hey guys, so the first primitive bridges just looked like logs tossed over water and really didn't seem that safe. But with the development of technology, humanity has really begun to build truly magnificent structures. An excellent example of this is the Dangyang Kunshan Viaduct that is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest bridge in the world. Nevertheless, there are places that seem to need but not have bridges. That includes the Straits of Gibraltar that has worldwide significance, connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. It's an important route for the Mediterranean communication with the outside world. About 200 large ships pass through them every day. They became even more important after the official opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. The 100-mile-long canal split Eurasia and Africa, and thanks to that, ships no longer needed to sail around Africa to get from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean and back. That saved them almost 5,000 miles of traveling. But the Straits of Gibraltar have a different story. Both sides have wanted to be connected for a long time now. There's intense ferry traffic between the Iberian Peninsula and Morocco, meaning there's a need for passage through the Straits. Building a passage would be good for tourism and the economies, for example. Connecting Europe and Africa would only need a bridge about 9 miles long, since the smallest distance across the Straits is a bit over 8.5 miles. That's not too big for modern bridges. Does Europe not want to undertake such a project, or are they unable to do so? No one knows, but a real attempt was made long ago, and it was much more difficult than expected. Bridge projects and other projects to connect the coasts were being developed in the early 20th century, and some of them were completely insane. So, in the late 1920s, German architect Hermann Sorgel developed the Allantropic Project. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa and make the latter's climate more suitable for Europeans. So he suggested building a hydroelectric dam that would close the Straits of Gibraltar. An 18-mile-long dam along the seafloor up to 1,050 feet deep seemed to the author completely plausible. He would also build a second dam across the Dardanelles. This would stop water from the Atlantic Ocean from flowing into the Mediterranean Sea, so the water level would gradually increase by 5 feet per year. But that was too slow for Sorgel. He suggested pumping water along a special channel to the Sahara, making an artificial sea there. The author's project would make the level of the Mediterranean lower down to 656 feet in just a few decades. The Gibraltar Dam alone could potentially generate about 50 gigawatts of energy, which is over 50% of all of the U.S.'s nuclear energy today. This could provide electricity to the nearby regions and provide fresh water for the Sahara, making more land for agriculture. Sorgel's plan would have connected electric lines running from the Gibraltar Dam connected by highways and railroads, making Europe and Africa be a new part of the world. When the Nazis came to power in Germany, Sorgel tried to bring the project to their attention, but Hitler was not impressed. Moreover, he wasn't allowed to advertise his El Antropa project anymore, so he only started talking about his ideas again after World War II. Many big manufacturers liked the project, since they hoped to make a lot of money from it. Despite that, the necessary sum of money was never found. It's worth noting the project was mostly utopian, and its manifestation caused unrest in Southern Europe. Sorgel died in 1952, along with his fantastic Atlantropa. But there have been more realistic ideas for uniting the two continents. There have been proposals for various bridges and underground tunnels. But before we look at the most interesting ones, let's see why it's so hard to do them and why there have been only timid attempts at starting on paper. The problem is mostly geographic in nature, and a big part is the depth of the strait. 
In some places, it's over 3,280 feet deep. In comparison, the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, is 2,716 feet tall. Imagine having to build supports even taller than that. Additionally, the world's tallest supports are in the Malau Viaduct at just 803 feet. We've never made supports as big as 2,700 feet. Another serious problem is the very strong current that is multi-directional. The lower part flows westward and the upper to the east. Considering the depth and current, it's very hard to build and serve a classical supported bridge. And you need to think about possible natural disasters. The cost of this project would be billions of dollars. And many European experts are convinced it's simply technically unrealistic. But despite that, in the 1990s, Chinese-American engineer Tun En Lin proposed a bridge across the strait. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa through two points. A peculiarity of his bridge was the unprecedented span of 3.1 miles. As independent consultants, Lin attracted an engineering company from San Francisco whose specialists created computer models and carried out research on the structural configuration and roughness systems, as well as aerodynamic characteristics. Overall, it was taken very seriously. The project was evaluated at $15 billion, but as usual, it just remained on paper. Later in 2004, American architect Eugene Sue proposed another extremely unusual bridge. He designed a floating bridge whose segmented construction is similar to a spine. Part of the bridge would go under the water so ships could pass over. Halfway through, the architect aimed on creating an artificial island almost 3.1 miles across. It would have wind and water turbines that could provide a significant amount of electricity to Morocco and southern Spain. If Eugene Sue's surprising bridge had been built, it definitely would have become one of the region's main tourist attractions, but it didn't come to pass. So if bridges don't work, what about something else? Ideas about building a tunnel under the straits have been bouncing around for a long time. For example, the tunnel under the English Channel is 32 miles long, over three times longer than the Strait of Gibraltar. The first ideas of such a plan appeared 150 years ago. Now, there were problems with finances and construction then. In the 1930s, Spain returned to the tunnel plan, but it quickly became clear that the strait's base was made of very hard rock, so digging a tunnel would be too difficult. Another difficulty was that near the Rock of Gibraltar, the strait is about 3,000 feet deep, and we've never made a tunnel so deep. But despite previous failures, Spain wasn't in a rush to turn away from a tunnel. In 1979, a combined Spain-Morocco committee for completing a new project was formed. During the research, additional complications that the builders would run into became known. Midway through the strait are the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, which creates seismic danger. The fault was filled with two clay canals, making the construction even harder. They tried to complete the project for 40 long years, but finally closed it because the two built parts collapsed and there was difficulty with maintenance. In 2021, the press once again began writing about an underwater tunnel connecting Europe and Africa. This time, Great Britain is quite interested. They need to look for new trade connections now that they've left the European Union. The construction of a tunnel from Gibraltar to Tangier Morocco's largest port, is a logical step. Now, it's not clear who would control the borders and who would pay for it, though. In any case, it doesn't matter yet, since there's no definite information about the project. If you believe the forecast, Africa will be one of the world's most quickly developing areas in the coming decades. With such development, a bridge or tunnel connecting the two continents will become especially important. So there's a chance that something will appear sooner or later. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like and comment. Let me know if you're on Team Bridge or Team Tunnel when it comes to what's going to cross between Europe and Africa. I think I'm on Team Bridge. Technology will figure something out soon. I'm sure Elon Musk will be involved with it. Anyway, we'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.